Hello and welcome to the second edition of Horizon, the video magazine of GM Financial. Today we've got a guest who's a stalwart in the investment management industry, Mr. Nilesh Shah, MD of Kotak Mahindra Mutual Fund. He actually doesn't need an introduction. The entire investment management industry knows him. He has had a very long stint in this area. He's seen the investment industry grow. He's seen the investors. He's seen the India story unfolding in front of his eyes. And comes with a very vast knowledge, vast experience. And today we are going to have a discussion with him on what's happening in the United States, the United States banking crisis of 2023, what it means for India and what it means for the Indian investor. So welcome Dilesh Bhai for thank this you, discussion Mr. and thank you so much for your uh, time. Uh, you know, we are meeting at a time when um, uh, there is a sort of a banking crisis brewing in US and part of Europe. We see three major bank failures in 2023 in the United States. What are your immediate reactions to that crisis and how do you compare that with the global financial crisis of 2008-9? So, Amit Bhai, first thing which is so satisfactory, where Shamrao Vittal Bank in India has to announce that SVB is an American bank, not me. Right. Absolutely. But on a serious note, the banking crisis of 2022 and 23 is actually for investment in government securities not in subprime like in 2008. So people did learn from their mistakes of 2008 not to lend to people who were not capable of paying. But then they forgot the basic fundamental of duration. They ended up buying long duration government securities, mortgage backed securities and realized that when interest rates go against you, you end up losing a lot of money. So risk management is common between the crisis of 2008 and 22 but credit is not the common thing so essentially if we just look at the three basic risks in debt side which is duration credit and liquidity <coughs> somewhere somebody focuses too much on one and forgets the other is that what we can uh, learn Absol from absolutely within us there are banks where they have managed interest rate risk very well and then there are banks which have failed to do it. I guess in banks where risk management process is part of the DNA, by and large they have survived the crisis. Mm -hmm. Banks which were riding a wave, like for example Silicon Valley Bank probably got a lot of money as startups got a lot of money and they had to pass their money somewhere. And in the process, uh, they ended up probably ignoring the risks and going for carry, going for return. Mm -hmm. They just thought that government securities, who can lose money? Uh, well, if interest rate goes up, you do end up losing money, even in government securities. Yeah. Yeah. I was looking at some uh, data from FDIC. And between 2000 and 2023, in last 23 years, there have been only five years where there was not a single bank failure in the US. To put it the other way, 18 out of 23 years, some or the other bank has failed. Majority of them were small, but 2008-9 and 2023 were huge Big names. Uh, uh, names, large names. Now, is it talking about the strength of that market or the economy that it allows weaker players to die? Or would you call it the failure of the Federal Reserve that the banking crisis keeps happening every now and then? So I think it will be unfair to blame, blame the regulator for crisis because it's like road. If you build a road, if you allow cars to move, there will be some accidents. Hmm. You don't stop moving because car accidents happen. I think regulators by and large has done a good job in US as well as in India. These accidents are part and parcel of the system and people learn from those mistakes and improve. In US, I think the difference is good bank and bad banks. Mm -hmm. 
the good banks are banks which have which are conservative in nature which manage risk well and the bad banks are the banks which try to ride a wave try to ride a momentum and make money overall we have seen that banks irrespective of size which follow conservative practices have done well hmm. whether it's us whether it's rest of the world banking is not a flashy business banking yeah. is all about conservatism and many many years back when i was starting my career someone told me that banking is the biggest risky business you lend 100 rupee and you are expected to earn 2 or 3 rupees in terms of spread so if you are right you will get 2 or 3 rupees then if you are wrong you will lose 100 rupee so there can't be a bigger risky business than bank and hence one has to be extremely conservative that's very well said because of putting risk in that perspective completely changes the wave and looks at the business otherwise you are right i mean lot of people want to ride the wave and they are focusing more on growth so uh, again somebody had said that um, it's easy to lend money it's difficult to get it back absolutely and that's where one needs to focus a return of principal is more important than return on principal beautifully said but uh, uh, talking about learning from the past you know 2008 9th global financial crisis taught us one phrase but some of the players are too big to fail yep in 2008 and 9 again F, as per fdic data some 165 banks failed the total asset size of those 165 banks was 544 billion dollars in 2023 three banks have failed and the total asset size is 548 billion dollars 4 billion more than 165 banks then so the bigger players are failing so did we learn or something else happened i think there was learning from 2008 crisis dot frank act came paul walkers uh, some of the suggestions got implemented capital adequacy went up but many a times what happens that you try to secure one part of the area the other becomes weak at the end of the day financial markets will always have accidents if you take risk then only you can generate return and the moment you don't manage risk you will fail it's like car if you don't accelerate you can't move forward but if you accelerate too much you will bang someone the the equilibrium on speed is critical for safe drive equilibrium on growth and what kind of growth you are generating is is necessary for safe banking my feeling is that in american system they have a fantastic way of cleaning up so if you remember bernie madoff scam happened mm. scams happened all over the world but in us every single naya paisa was recovered they went after bernie madoff's family to an extent that even their inner wares were sold to recover money they went after all the investors who redeemed money out of bernie madoff they did even spare widows and you know weaker set of people who had received money saying that no this does not belong to you eventually every single naya paisa was recovered and paid back to the legitimate investors mm. i think this is something which is admirable about us they allow they make mistakes they allow to make mistakes but then there is a severe punishment for wrong doing they clean up the mess very very nicely and i am sure like 2008 financial crisis they strengthen their systems 2023 crisis also will lead to better strengthening of american system wow this this interesting perspective yeah cleaning it up entirely when something is caught i think that's that's a big one yeah um i was reading another uh, report uh, there's this research center called pew research center and they uh, in one of the articles they wrote that uh, the banking crisis uh you no know, it happens in waves so like 2008 9 was one 2022 23 is another one prior to that there was one in the early 1990s so these kind of failures keep happening in waves what could be the reason why uh the 
failures of individual banks get combined does it talk about uh, the failure of diversification that the system wide there is a problem so amit bhai business as cyclical yeah now how will subprime crisis get built when you start lending to non eligible borrowers and it has to reach a level before which things can blow so undoubtedly crisis will be cyclical in nature how does crisis begin when there are excesses mm. if there are small excesses you wouldn't even notice it's like you put little salt extra in your food you won't even notice but when i pour entire salt bottle into food you will notice it so banking crisis financial crisis will be cyclical in nature and by and large mistakes will be committed not by just one or two person then they won't become crisis mm. it will be committed by a set of people committed by a people who are copying each other and which is why you know crises are like cockroaches there's never one, one. there's someone coming <laughs> yeah there's never one cockroach yes that's true so uh, if that's the situation in the us uh, how do you look at india how is it different or similar uh, are we vulnerable are we stronger and safer how do you look at indian banking system so compared to us undoubtedly india has done exceptionally well our regulators have been far more prudent compared to let's say american regulators in terms of flexibility given to the banks, banks. Uh, for example in us uh, the asset liability regulations were fairly relaxed whereby you end up putting overnight money into long duration paper in india alm regulations are far more stricter the second thing is uh you know assurance on the deposit side uh implicitly and explicitly there is guarantee of the government to the entire banking system and even when crisis erupted in yes bank there was never a depositors run on the bank because there is comfort confidence hope mm. that government is behind it uh dicgc also covers very large part of deposits so there is never a run on a indian bank because of this explicit or implicit guarantee of the government uh, the third thing is htm regulations hmm. our regulations are reasonably stricter reasonably tighter so put together we can say that ke pani palla paar bandhi hai so before the flood comes you build the flood gates so our regulators have been proactive they have built flood gates but ultimately will it always prevent crisis answer is no mm. there will be always something new which we can learn important thing in finance is to learn from your mistakes and don't repeat it don't repeat it literally yeah, i also remember in 2009 also when um, uh, the real estate sector was booming 2007 uh, RBI had increased the uh, you know risk uh, uh, weightages. weightages of real estate assets yeah from i think 1 to 1.5 and that reduced the lending of banking sector to real estate i think that that was also pani pela par baat hui so see, see, a, a, as we speak they have advised that please don't increase unsecured lending beyond a point yeah. they have advised one bank ceo that please you know bother about growth because you are running at too fast a pace so rbi has been very very proactive in addressing the constituency giving them nudges so that they remain on course and don't get way late it's a brilliant one and uh, so given that now if there is an indian investor how should the indian investor look at the current situation uh, as an investor in india and as an investor in the international markets so as an investor should you invest in india as well as abroad answer is yes we need some geographic diversification number 2 in india the experience teaches us that people who have made money are long term investor 89% of traders lose money hmm. my feeling is that 99% of investors make money so you have to figure out which sports you want to play trading where 89% probability of you losing money and 
investments were 99% probability of making money. Number two, disciplined investor makes money. Uh, Amit Bhai, I'm sure all of us in our starting of career have followed tips, followed, uh, you know, rumors and bought stocks and burnt everything. Then we became disciplined. Please learn from our mistakes and our experience and be disciplined from the beginning. And the third thing which I have seen is that it's always quality which pays. Uh, bulk of the return comes from 75 or 100 companies. These are the companies where managements are good, quality is fantastic. So for India, be a long-term investor, be a disciplined investor and be a quality ch chaser. Buy quality companies, that should be good enough. India is a rising tide, it will lift every boat. Just don't sit in the boat where there is a hole, then it will not get lifted. Or, or don't create a hole unnecessarily. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. It's very similar to uh, somebody recently said about India's story that, uh, you know, one of the biggest risks that we face is that we will score a self goal. Absolutely. So long as we don't do that, we are fine. So yeah. Yeah, uh, thank you so much, sir. It was a pleasure talking to you and uh, as always, very insightful uh, discussion on a topic which apparently looks a very tough and complex topic. It's US, it's banking, it's crisis. But the way you broke it down and simplified it, it was wonderful talking to you, sir. Thank you. Thank Thanks. you, Amit. Bye. Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme-related documents carefully.